interesting that they know to do that. Like it makes you go a lot, make you switch to portrait. All right, so we'll go to fate or to, um, the Graham. Give it just a second. You know, were talking about YouTube and all that. Yeah, dude, our church Facebook stuff mm -hmm. this last week has blown up. What for? With that. With what? Bot stuff. Oh, 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 oh gotcha. Got okay. I'm I'm just, you, I was looking for a definition of blown up. Yeah. It is absolutely. I can't remember. I can't remember the number, but there was like, I don't know, three thousand five second views and just tons of just ridiculous comments. <laughs> it's been what? it's been a deal. What? How does that happen, man? How does that happen? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. Doggone it. All right. I'm going to go in here and oops, I got to switch. I'm going to edit the description real quick here. Might have a light crowd today, just with the different yeah, it's a, time. It's a different time. It's just, you know. Be what it be. Yeah. It'll all be post-edited and, and amazing at the... All right. I'm sharing out to all the groups, all right? Yep. To all the people. All the peeps in the world. Yep. I'll go to Twitter. We've actually been getting some little bit of traction on Twitter, which is interesting. It is interesting, isn't it? All right. It's to all the groups. All right, I'm going to just shorten that up just a little bit. Okay. I think we're good there. We got some folks jumping on, which is good. Appreciate yeah. that. Let's go. We'll keep an eye on the bot world. Oh, golly. I don't see anything yet, so I think we're in good shape there. So that's good. All right. I think we're good to go. Let's do it. Not, we're, we're in a little bit of a time crunch today, so we don't have time for frivolity. Yeah. We're not even going to. We won't even, we, we're so focused today. We're not even going to respond to any of the <laughs> sports stuff. None of it doesn't matter. Well, at least not in the pre-show. We may do that in the regular show. None of that matters. Yeah, we ain't got time. We ain't got time for that today. We got stuff to do. All right. Let me pull up the chat. There we go. Yeah. I'm almost trying to reel us in. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> Try to get us distracted. The devil is a lie. We're focused. When he hears three, two, one coming, he'll be it just blow his mind. It's about to happen right now. Yep. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mobilized Church Podcast. This is Chris Dillingham alongside. My big brother, Ken Dillingham, Jr. the third on a beautiful Tuesday, Ken. It is absolutely gorgeous out today. Mm -hmm. It's it's spring is hit. It's beautiful. And you survived the, what would you call it? The apocalypse? <laughs> the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I survived it. My car started this morning. Yeah. And not that I was expecting it not to start, but I don't know, you know, the the the, the things that you hear. It's going to mess up your electronics. It's going to, you know, whatever. It's so funny, man. Like, we were listening. You were out in the backyard watching. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It was cool that how yeah. dark it got and yeah, cold and whatever. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was yeah. pretty wild. But, but like, 
you know, there were comments like the birds are going to stop chirping and, yeah. you know, yeah, like, that. like nocturnal animals are going to start coming out of the woodwork. Whatever, man. That's not none of that. You know, it's, it's, it, I mean, I don't know. We, although <laughs> we did, we did do a video. Let me see if I can, I, I, we don't, we don't have, we've never done this before. <clears throat> um, oh boy. I thought, <laughs> oh boy, this could get had, interesting. It was, it was so. Scott has this amazing ability to, uh, no, I don't have it on my phone. Scott has an amazing ability to make a sound like crickets. Oh, so that's quite so a gift. I said, yeah, so I said. Ladies and gentlemen, we're sitting here getting ready for the eclipse. The darkness is starting to come upon us. The nocturnal creatures are beginning to move about. In fact, we can hear night creatures chirping in the distance, and he starts making cr cricket sounds, <laughs> and it sounds like crickets. That's and I was awesome. like, you know, that is yeah. awesome, man. That is awesome. Well, we we survived it. We had a we had a little text thread in, in our leadership group, and so we were texting about it, and then I, I went silent. I told him, I said, I said, it's like three minutes before total eclipse. The rapture is about to happen. So I'll see you guys yeah. on the other side. And then I went radio silent for about 30 minutes. So I got a little nervous, a little nervous. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, so we survived that. Ken, this is the, this is, this is the greatest. I know we got a limited time, but just real quick, I'll just mention this yeah. is the best sports week it of is. the year. 100% the best sports week of the year. It's the crescendo. It's the crescendo of all crescendos. It's the <laughs> crashing of the symbols. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, you're wrapping up. It's, it's the climax to the March Madness, which wraps up, just sort of folds into the Masters. Absolutely. Which is clearly the greatest i i'm sorry the open championship and all of that stuff and whatever nah, the masters bro it's all about the masters nothing like La it. last night did make me feel better about my a line i lost to connecticut because bro. in the second half if purdue didn't have a dude that was like nine foot six and just a gigantic dude yeah. they may not have scored in the second half like yeah. they could not get a shot off which is what happened to illinois well, the thing about it is <clears throat> Connecticut really shut down their inside out game. It mm -hmm. was, a, it was really crazy how, and, and the thing about it is here's the thing that Purdue has never had to deal with a massively good seven foot defender. Oh man. And it's so, a rim. He was crazy. So they, didn't, good. so they didn't have to, they didn't have to, they didn't have to suck in on Edie <clears throat> like most teams who might have a guy six ten guarding him, yeah. you know, he just can't handle him. And um, obviously the dude scored. I mean, he got 30, I mean, what was it? 35 or 37 points or something like that. But my point is, you know, he still scored and, 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 and clicking and did get into foul trouble, but for whatever reason, they just didn't have to, they didn't have to suck in. So he would, they, when they would do that, then he'd kick it out and they'd hit threes and then they'd yeah. play that inside out game. They just didn't have the perimeter game. Because they, they have because, it. because they could just stay defending them, and uh, it was you know, it's pretty impressive. Uh, and I hate to do this. We're gonna get right into our our deal here. I, I hate to I hate to school somebody on their basketball ignorance when they start making comments. Yeah, but but I feel like it's necessary, Ken. I feel like okay. it's necessary. Oh boy, John Hummel just you know he's trying to goad us into this. Illinois got smashed. If you would have listened to what I said. No. What I exactly what I said was if Illinois would have had they got smashed. If Illinois would have had a dude that was nine foot tall, they probably wouldn't have gotten beat by 30. They would have gotten beat by 15, just like Purdue did. If Purdue didn't have if they would have had Coleman Hawkins instead of instead of Edie, they would have gotten blown out as well. So so you kind of they would have gone as far thing. in the they'd have gone as far in the tournament as Wisconsin did if they hadn't had yeah. Wisconsin <laughs> even in the tournament? <laughs> uh, for a minute, I think. I mean, Not maybe. very long. Not very long. J-Rod makes Oakland, the comment. If Oakland would have had Edie, well, no, if they Oakland might have would gone have, all the way. <laughs> hell, if, Purdue, if Purdue would have had Golki or whatever his name was that could. <laughs> Man, that's true, right? 
He yeah. looked like he looked like you didn't play like that, but you shot like that back in the day. Your game was different. He was just I, I he was just a gunner. So, yeah. um, so I love J Rod's comment. Quote: Will not entertain any sports discussion, but just real quick, let me say dot dot dot. Yeah, that is us right there. There yeah. it was. There it was. Right. All right. So a little bit of time crunch today. Had to had to readjust coming back. Uh, from absence last week, mom's yeah. funeral, which was um, a, a very moving time, and I appreciate all of the comments and and very just well wishes so. that we've gotten. Yeah, the the uh, overwhelming amount of support we've gotten has been unbelievable. So certainly appreciate that, and uh, thankful thankful for a mom that that uh, got us into church, bro. We wouldn't be here without her. Right? Is, I mean, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you you stop, and once all of the the pain and the shock of all of you know losing a loved one, particularly a parent, when all of that settles, uh, you go back to just faith, your pistuo, your you know mm-hmm. your good theology, and you just say, you know what, we're living for. There's only. Um, uh, you know, I, I like to say it like this. There's only two days that matter and it's yeah. this day, this day, and that day. Mm-hmm. It's exactly I right. Live this day and what's going to happen on that day. So <clears throat> yeah. time is undefeated, isn't it? Amen. Time is undefeated. So we're all facing that. And, uh, but we have the hope. So we just want to say thank you to everybody for, for the well wishes, the prayers, thoughts, all that good stuff. And, uh, appreciate all of that. So we're ready to, ready to rock and roll today again a little bit of a time crunch we're gonna we're gonna hammer through this but it's gonna be good this is gonna be a good conversation today ken Mm -hmm. so so i want you to i want you to set it up you're gonna kind of go through some information that is out there and it's available we're not you know one of the things we talk about is like like we want to be committed to principles not trends um you know, yeah. I, I think unfortunately in in Christianity, because of the church growth model, I think yeah. oftentimes a lot of, we, we see something that seemingly works, and so we try to chase it, whatever, mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. applying just the the apostolic biblical principles that that Jesus so gave us about reaching our world. Um. So, but I do think it's important to understand the culture. I think you see this in Paul's writings when he would go different places and how he would adapt to, to the cultural elements that yeah, were I'll be all there. things to all men that I may win some. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I think it's important to understand, you know, we're not living in Mayberry anymore. It's, it, you know, there's, there's not Andy and Barney walking the streets. It's not 1953, uh, you know, Americana. And, and, and sometimes we romanticize that and whatever, but, but, but it's the hour that we're living in. It's an increased secular world. Uh, definitely, definitely a post-Christian nation. As much as we, you know, we we hate that. Um, so, so the question today that we want to kind of kind of wrestle through is, like, our role. What is our role in the mission? Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the role of the Holy Spirit to convict and convert. So, how do we how do we become po- um, partners and co laborers with, with the Spirit of God in the purpose of the mission. And this isn't, before we get started, one, one thought that hit me, Kim, before we, when we were kind of just planning this and talking about this right before we got on, is this there's an assumption that if you're Spirit-filled, you understand the, the burden and responsibility of living missionally. You, 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 I mean, there's an assumption. Right. But it's I mean, not a well-founded assumption, I don't think. No, but I think there. I think that should be. We're, we're just gonna. We're just gonna make the leap that every spirit-filled believer recognizes that when you have the missional spirit of Jesus living yeah. inside of you, that you're gonna you're gonna understand that that. Um, Oh man, what's the word I'm looking I see, for? I see what you say. I thought you were saying that 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 there's the assumption that if you're spirit-filled, you'll know how to do it. No, 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 no. That 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 you'll feel the yes. impulse. The That's compulsion. what it's exactly the responsibility that you yeah. have to live on mission. That's so right. so so what we do is like there's that assumption. So what we've tried to do is say, okay, here are the biblical principles and concepts. 
How do you apply this into your life? So today, that's kind of where we're going with this is how do we live as co-laborers, missional co-laborers with the Holy Spirit? So why don't you get us launched off? Give us some information okay, uh, to get that. the conversation started. Okay. Well, I'm going to be using some material that came from the book Bless by Dave Ferguson, Five Everyday Ways to Love Your Neighbor and Change the World. And um, it's not, that's that's not a, um, uh, I'm not advocating for the book. I'm just simply, we're going to use some of the material in the book to have a discussion today. And it's uh, kind of a takeoff you- from uh, <laughs> Michael Frost Bells, right? If I remember yeah, correctly. It yeah, it really is. So, um, so it's interesting because he starts off kind of talking about um, our, our propensity to want to um, see people saved, which is a good thing, right? And uh, sure. like just like you just said, we should, if, if we have the Spirit of Christ in us, if we understand what the cross was about, then we should understand that he's not willing that any should perish. And that we, and that we should take, you know, we should take heart in the fact that our that, that, that we, our burden is aligned with Jesus's burden. Uh, yeah, sometimes our right. motivation isn't aligned. <laughs> sometimes. Sure. But, sure. You know, but so interestingly, he starts off talking about this guy, George, and he tells the story about how he tried to get George saved. Mm-hmm. And he, and he talked about how he worked on him and he did all the stuff and all the conversations and he, you know, and basically what the deal was is he, he's using this as an example to say, you know, I talked to him and I talked to him and I kept going, I kept chipping away until eventually George gave his life to Jesus. That's kind of the point. And right. so he said, George needed a place to stay, help him get back on his feet. And so they, you know, they did. And, and so, and, and so he said in, in that meantime, after George was converted right? I'm going to use this term and we're going to use this to sort of leap into this idea of conversion versus transformation. Yeah. Um, and George was converted. Uh, he, he, he finally, uh, he, he pulled down the, uh, uh, the, the, what do they call that in Star Trek and all those movies, you know, the, they put the big, you know, the force field, Force field. Like, yes, yes, yes. He pulled down. He pulled field. down. Look the at me spiritual. pulling out the Star Trek information. <laughs> Pretty powerful. <laughs> no, I you impress me. About. You impress me every podcast with something. And uh, yeah, so so anyway, the force field came down, and and George, you know, he was converted. He gave his life to Jesus. Whatever. All right. And he says, he says, within it, this is so funny. He says, um, uh, it said um, George in the space of 48 hours converted who was converted. (laughs) He, (laughs) he converted back. He says from Christ (laughs) follower to car thief. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, he he said they, he said he converted, he was converted to Jesus and they let him move in with them. He stole $150 from his roommate, hijacked another friend's car, left town, never to be heard of again. Wow. So he said, so George converted in 48 hours, he converted to Jesus and then converted back from Christ follower to car thief. And so anyway, so, so I think this is a really good place to start the conversation. And that is, is that our goal should not be to convert people. And, and one of the interesting things is, is it's this idea that says, uh, if you read your Bible, John chapter 16, uh, eight through 11, you'll find that the Bible tells us that it, it, it is not our job to convert anyone. Now, this should be good news. Like, this should help us. Yeah. Uh, John 16 says that it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict and convert people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we talk a lot about having spiritual conversations. We talk a lot about improving our skill in that. We talk a lot about the principles, core principles, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I believe that we need to just simply stop and we need to say, it is not our job to convert anyone. In fact, conversion to Christianity may just simply be a mental acquiescence to your amazing debate skills. Ooh, it okay. May, it may not be that somebody's given their life to, to Jesus. It may not be that they're deciding to die the death with Christ. Yes. That is the death of 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 self, uh, self-will. Obviously, Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny himself, 
take up his cross. And, you know, look, it, it may not be that a person's willing to deny themselves. It might not be that they're willing to take up their cross. It might just simply be that your that our constant barrage mm-hmm. of conversion tactics and our, and, and, and our, <clears throat> you know, the, I don't know what was the, some of the stuff that we've heard through the years that people use, you know, Roman road and the, mm-hmm. the, 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 uh, uh, the bridge, the, yeah, the four spiritual, some of the things he talks about the bridge illustration, evangelism, some explosion, uh, explosion, uh, various spiritual conversation starters. And, and, it, and the thing about it is, and what we're going to talk about today is basically this idea. And what attracted me to this, by the way, Chris, yeah. is that he mentions even Frank St. St. Francis of Assisi. Okay about preaching the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. And he uses that as a platform. So it's so funny because we talked about that the last time together. <laughs> right, right. Right. And right. he uses that as a platform to which he needs to go back and listen. Dave, if you're listening to our podcast, go back and listen to our podcast from last week, because we proved that that wasn't really what he said or even what, what he meant. He right. <clears throat> which by the way, in all fairness, he actually says that, <clears throat> but he said, but it actually gave him the ability to stop and say, maybe we're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. Between George and that quote gave him the ability to step back. He said, look, Christians are frustrated with their lack of success. Um, unbelievers are in, more and more growing, uh, not interested. So I'm going to bring up the first point, flip it to you here. Okay. And, and the, and there's three things. Okay. In an, it, it, in a recent Barna, uh, research. Okay. It was three things Barna asked, our unsaved friends and neighbors, what they value in a person with whom they would talk, somebody that they would be willing to engage in conversation about spiritual matters. And the first one is, so here it is. Okay. Listening without judgment. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Ferguson says, listening is one of the purest acts of love. <clears throat> what our neighbors want is for someone to lean in and just listen. They want someone who will assume the best. They desire to have another person to absorb their questions and stories, not so that they can come to a verdict, but so that they can process their feelings and experiences in relationship. That here's what I think we need to nuance here, Chris, what you said about, and I know, man, I know that was a long time setting the table, but it'll give us the ability to have a quick conversation here out. Yeah. What you said early on Mm -hmm. was this that the 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 trend chasing of the tractional model church the idea that that we've we've read books about churches that have removed crosses we heard some of us who follow these kinds of things heard the stories about the memo that went out from elevation church the week before easter and they told people don't use spiritually loaded terms and words that might turn people off and then they had to come back and say oh no 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 we're not talking about no we're going to in our service we are going to be talking about the blood of jesus and the cross and the resurrection. We're just saying, don't, don't talk about these terms that might just automatically have religious loaded concepts and so on and so forth. Yeah. Here's the deal. All of that is the result of an attractional model perspective that says, how can we get people in and not turn them off? Yeah. And the problem is, is when we start going through these conversation points of Barna, Unbelievers are not looking when they say, listen, without judgment, they are not saying, listen to me and accept my lifestyle, accept the choices that I've made. And basically I want you to listen to why I don't believe that's yeah. not the point. Right. So anyway, let's, let's rock that one first. Listen without judgment, which is basically they want someone to, uh, absorb their questions and stories so that they can, so that they can process their feelings and experiences with God and faith and truth and whatever in relationship. Yeah. I, I think that, I think the point, <clears throat> you know, made or you made originally is so critical and so important is, is if we view the mission through the win of conversion, like the only, like, obviously we want, I, I want to just clarify to people, like we want people to experience the transformation, the gospel. The goal is that if they're discipleable, they're going to experience 
new birth. They're going to be born again, right? Which is very different than conversion, which is becoming a Christian. Correct. Absolutely. And understanding, see, even Zoom, even Restream thought that was amazing with balloons. If you're watching, you got the balloons. Yeah, so it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, you know, I think so. I think that's important because, you know, oftentimes when people hear what like what you just read and what you're saying, to to that mindset, it feels like well, that means we got to water it down. Yep. Yeah. Right. So good, Chris. We gotta we gotta water it down. We're not. That's what you're saying. You're saying we're not supposed to stand for the truth. Bless God. We we're not supposed to tell. No. Listen. Listen. Look what Jesus did. I mean, Jesus was the master of listening, uh-huh. and and you, again, understanding culture, bro. For decades now, we have had it pounded into our brains. This idea of the worst thing that you could possibly be is judgmental. That's very true. You're a hate-filled hate monger. And so so if you don't have relationship and you and you immediately come out and you just start telling a person what all the things that they're supposed to do, they're mm. they've been indoctrinated with secular thinking and that's and right, wrong, or indifferent, it is what it is. That's that's very the true. way their thinking is. So what 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 I hear there in that in that uh uh, point of, from from Ferguson. What I'm what I'm hearing is this: is he's not saying water it down. He's not saying don't yeah. have those conversations. What he's saying yeah. is, what people are looking for is for us to hear their story of where they're coming from. And if we're really missional people and we're really mm-hmm. skilled people, one of two things is going to happen. Well, not two things should happen. Number one, we should be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and and be able to have effective this is why we do what we do can be, mm-hmm. be able to have effective spiritual conversations to engage people where they are to know how to ask the right questions mm-hmm. right the gifts of the spirit are not for us just to tell people bless god this is what god says maybe god wants to use us in the gifts of the spirit to ask the questions that puts them in tension that puts them in a place where now they're confronted with those the different values but you're not just just you know, just telling them what to do. So the, so the first thing is, is, you know, being led by the spirit. And the second, the second piece of that, what they're saying, listen to without judgment is having an understanding that without Jesus, all of us would be in that same place. Exactly. Right. So, so getting to that place of an empathy, I may never have done what you did or you're, yeah. you're doing or the lifestyle that you're living right now, but without Jesus, we're all in the same boat. We're all in the yeah. same place. And so being able to hear where that person is coming from, and again, it goes back to what you've always said about Francis Schaeffer, right? Listen to them for 55 minutes so you can make it gospel to them. Mm-hmm. What people are looking for in the world, everybody wants to be heard. Yeah, There's a mindset that says, says that the worst thing you can be is judgmental. And when Christians just immediately go back to, well, bless God, this is the way it is, and if you don't like it, that's tough, it just reinforces the mindset that it's not grace-filled. I was thinking yesterday, Ken, yeah. that, that you know, the I, I, I heard a song, at like, I don't know, at a, at a store or something. I heard a song that just really resonated with me, and it said something like, something like, find a girl who loves Jesus on Sunday and is wild on Saturday or something like that. I'm like – that's the mindset yeah. that the world has, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. That, that, yeah. And so Jesus so, is Jesus is an idol. He you take him off the shelf when you need him, type deal. Yeah. And right. And so, so they we, like the idea of what Jesus can do. They just don't like the idea of what Jesus demands. Absolutely. Yeah. And so if so if we come out, so in that situation, that scenario, you could come at a person and be like, Oh, that's that's wrong. You can't do that. Jesus in that way, and blah, 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 whatever. But what if you engage that spiritual conversation to find out where's where did that come from? Where did they get that belief system from? How how did how like you know, what part of unless a person loses his life, yeah, they can't be a follower of Jesus. How does yeah, that or 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 what do you mean by wild? Yeah. Right. Does that, what does that, is, is that, is, does that, <clears throat> is that the image? <clears throat> so, okay. All right. So you want to be, so you want a girl, you know, that's a good church girl on Sunday and wild on Saturday. So let me ask you a question. What is, so what do you mean by wild? What, what, what is it about that that you want? And <clears throat> do you think that's reflective of the kingdom of Jesus? Right. Right. That that's that, if that's you wanted exactly to be it. like Jesus on Sunday, 
Are you saying you don't want her to be like Jesus on Saturday? <laughs> and those, dude, those are the things that we're saying, Chris. And I think that's the thing that 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 this is saying is is to say, you know, it's not listening without judgment does not mean this is, and this is the thing because the man, this this idea of some of these churches, these mega church models, and some of the stuff that's come at us for years and years and years that says, you know, seeker sensitive, seeker friendly, don't dr- don't run people away. You, you know, you're only going to grow if you get people through the door and get a bunch of guests and then get them coming back next week. And then that's yeah. how you, that's, you know, get yourself a crowd. Dude, I that's remember, what it's all about. dude, I remember being, oh golly, I, I'm not, I'm not even going to say who I remember saying it, <clears throat> but many years ago, I went to a church growth deal, a, a United Pentecostal church, church growth deal. And the person said, this is the way you grow a church. You get a crowd. And then you turn them into a congregation. Hmm. That was what they said. You get a crowd and then you turn them into a congregation. That's how you grow a church. And I'm like, well, that's basically parroting the old mega church model. Get you get a crowd, get people through the door, get them like in the church, get them connected to our pro- programs and services, get them to come back tomorrow. And then eventually they'll be like, Hey, I want to, I want to be a part of that. That's basically conversion, making them church members. Jesus doesn't want people to be church members. Jesus wants them to experience the freedom and the joy of his transformation. I like what Ron Wolford said, <clears throat> conversion through human means or influence will lead to stunted and struggling growth yeah conversion through new birth by the influence of the spirit that's i like that nuance dude because 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 conversion in a in a biblical sense true conversion because jesus did say to peter when thou art converted strengthen the brethren so we do believe in conversion what we're meaning is is that true spiritual conversion not conversion into religious christianity yeah, absolutely. So anyway, I just want to say that because I think that's a good point you're making that when it's saying, listen without judgment, because we say, well, we think, well, it says, you know, the worst thing you could be is judgmental. So that means I just need to accept them for what they are. No, what it means is listening without judgment does not mean that you should just accept me. They're not expecting you to say, well, you should just expe- accept me. No, what it means is <clears throat> let's listen and talk about it. I want to hear how you got here. How did you get to this place? How did you arrive at that perspective about God? How did you arrive about that perspective about the Bible? Let's talk about that. But here's the deal: the the, the church growth is impersonal. You're you're you know, right. you know what I'm saying? Like it's an impersonal thing. You're right. you're just a crowd. You're just a person in the crowd. But the mission is is very personal, and that's that's the difference, and that's where we struggle. You can gather a bunch of people that come on Sunday. Just because they gather on Sunday does not make them disciples of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Yep. And so, so the the impersonal part of the church growth will never. The, so, because it's impersonal, Ken, when you present some of those things that 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 go against what people believe and what they you know how they feel and whatever, right. it yeah. feels judgmental. Who it are feels, you to tell me? Right. It feels like you're attacking them That's and you're coming out. But when you're personal, you can sit down and have a conversation. You, you and I can sit down and have a conversation, Bro. and you can tell me some things that that other people would never be able to tell me because I know where you're coming from. I know, Bro. I know your love for me. I know you want as what's a pastor, best for me. As a pastor, I've had conversations with people that even other hard, people in the church can't have hard conversations because they people. know they know that I'm just keeping that I'm just fulfilling my biblical obligation to watch for their souls. Yeah, exactly. That's so good. Hey, can I read something real quick? Do it. This is a paragraph. This is so good. He says, as I reflect now on many of my attempts to share the good news, the focus was always about what I would say. I did most of the talking. And if I did ask a question, it was not so I could actually listen, but so I could maneuver the conversation to give me a chance to respond with my answers. Isn't that good? Yeah. He said, my, my intentions were good, but in retrospect, retrospect, I often did way too much talking and I prejudged what other people needed. Man. Wow. So good, man. That's so good. And that's the, again, that's the whole point, right? Is, mm-hmm. is you've got to be in a person's life. Mm-hmm. You've got to right. really be in, you've really got to be in the person's life. 
to be able to have those conversations. Like, like for example, one of, one of my favorite questions, that, and I'll, I'll credit Randy Brown, who has an unbelievable ministry, his gifting of working with people in addictions. And, you know, a lot of times, a lot of them, even though addiction causes a lot of pain, it's a hard yeah. thing to break. And, you know, people start making excuses or tell them how you're living. And Randy Brown just has an ability to, to like build that rapport and that connection with somebody. And then he asks the question, well, how's that working out for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. That's not a judgmental question. No. Yeah. Is that working? Just, yeah. I mean, woman at the well. Yeah. You've had five husbands. You've had, you know, worshiping in this mountain, that mountain, whatever, whatever, which kind of leads into the second point, yeah. which is, this is interesting. Point number two is allow them to draw their own conclusions. Right. And it's, it's funny because it says your friends and neighbors are people, not your spiritual project. Right. Wow. They, they're, they're looking for someone who will not force a conclusion on them, but will trust them to have their own spiritual journey. And I think this is the thing that we need to, here's the, here, this is the hardest thing I think as believers, especially people who know truth is that there's something in a, in us that when people start drawing the wrong conclusions, we really want to correct them. Mm -hmm. There's something in a, in us that when people aren't arriving at the right conclusions, <clears throat> uh, James Littles once made this great statement. He said, for people who are Pentecostal, we sure have a low view of pneumatology. Okay. And pneumatology is the theological or the, uh, the academic word for the study of the working of the spirit. Right. Pneuma. Right. 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 And so he says, this is a great statement as Pentecostals. We certainly have a low view of pneumatology. The, 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 the reality is, is that what would happen if we believed <clears throat> that we could actually have a conversation with people, get into their life, get into the world, start having a conversation right where they are about the stuff that matters to them. And then when they start drawing their own conclusions, we're like, no, that's not right. Yeah. To say, well, why don't we search the scriptures and pray about that? And we'll come back and talk about it rather than to feel the need to say, no, that's not what the Bible says. Where did you learn? That's not what the Bible says. It's not what you're supposed to believe. Why can't we just simply go, all right, well, I understand. I understand how your experience might have informed you in that direction, but let's let the word of God be the final authority. Why don't we go to the scriptures? Let's go to prayer. Let's let Jesus answer that question. If we have a high view of pneumatology and believe, watch, if we believe John 16, that it's the work of the spirit to convict and to convert, yeah, then we're just aiding him in that process. So I don't know. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, bro, one that's, Absolutely. You have to believe. So it goes back to your original point, what you said about what I think it was maybe, maybe, maybe you're referencing what Dave Ferguson said, but it might just be that they're acquiescing to our, our debate skills or our, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to convince people and, and, you know, we've we've made the statement before a person convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Right, so you, right. you may have somebody that's like it's it's like it's like the heaven or hell method, you know, of of reaching people like you go to somebody like this. You know, this is a trend a few years ago. You go up to somebody and you say, hey, you know, do you want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? Well, like, OK, you've it's like it's like in a in a. um in a uh, court case, an attorney, you know, uh, the, the, the other attorney might stand up and be like, that's a leading question. Like you've, yeah. you're, you're yeah, 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 framing yeah, yeah. in such a way, yeah. like, come on, man. Yeah. Isn't it true? Isn't it true that you wanted to kill them? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and that's like, that's the question. attorney, right. <laughs> you know, when you went there, isn't it true that when you got on in your car on that night and you drove, you purposely drove to go to their house for an opportunity to kill them? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, I just, just to make the point real quick that, that leading somebody 
doesn't doesn't mean that that the spirit of God has changed them and changed their mind and changed their heart and changed their will and changed their way. And so, so we've got to ask ourselves a question. What is my responsibility? That's why I think this conversation is so important. What is my responsibility? We're co-laborers with him. He convicts, he can, he convicts, he converts. Our responsibility is help to lead people in that journey, the process. And what you said is we're going to go back to the word of God and we're going to let the word of God and the spirit of God, you have a responsibility you are going to, through his spirit, through his word, are going to be confronted with his truth and with his value system. Mm-hmm. And then you have the ability to make the choice. Do you want to be a disciple of Jesus and surrender what you value to the what to what he values? Too and good. and we have a lot of people that have been convinced to do certain things by our, by our argu- argumentative skills, mm-hmm. but have not been convinced by the spirit of God. And so it doesn't become a deeply held belief in them. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, can it's going to be revealed what they really believe. It. It'll endure or it'll fizzle out. Yeah. And it <clears throat> wouldn't it be interesting if we had the ability to have like if if we could think of that there's an X on the floor, and the X on the floor is the spot where Jesus talks to people, speaks to people. Like if there's this special spot yeah. that Jesus will talk, Jesus will speak, Jesus will reveal Himself. If we could just move them to that X. Yeah. It, then that, that's the conversation. All right. Finally, confidence. Here's the third thing. These are the three things. Okay. So the first thing was that we listen without judgment. Second is allow them to draw their own conclusions. This might be one of the most important of the whole three. Unbelievers want us to have confidence in sharing our own perspective. Wow. He says uh, the, the, the thing that Barna, the Barna group realized was that after, after you've listened and once you've given them space, to, to, to share how they came to where they are. Once you've allowed them to tell their, their journey, their side of it, why they've never be, wanted to be a part of a church or why they just have a hard time believing the Bible or whatever. And once you've allowed them to draw their own conclusions, it's then that people around us are interested in us confidently sharing our perspective. They want to know our stories. They want to hear our experiences, but they also want to know that it's real, genuine, and that we're coming from a place of confident conviction. Wow. Which is why we've got to be disciples of Jesus. That's it, man. Part of the problem is we're not experiencing consistent transformation, right? And if you're not experiencing consistent transformation, you're not going to have a deep, a deep rooted belief Bro, this is the thing. This is the thing I've been, I've just been hammering over and over again in my own personal life, but but to others as well, is you have to have a deep rooted belief that the Jesus way is the better way. That's right. And if you're not, if you're experiencing transformation, then you're going to believe that, and you're able, you're able to 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 to, you know to to speak that to people with conviction in a way that they can feel the passion. And they can feel that it's genuine, that it's authentic, that it's real. Like that's an overused word, authentic, but that's really what what people are looking for today. Now, now they don't think that you're trying to convince them. Sales they're just pitch. simply believing that you're convinced. Yes. That's the difference. That's don't try to difference. convince me. Just tell me why you're convinced. Mm, that's so good. We can just that's wrap the, the whole thing. We can wrap it up. There it is. <laughs> That's the, that's the whole podcast, brothers and sisters, in 10 seconds. So a little and, bit of conviction, right? A little bit of yeah. conviction. If if we don't have that, what's that say about our our walk and relationship with God? Your your own story should be very convincing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Well, all right. So I know we had a little little uh little time crutch here. We crammed yeah. a lot in in just a short amount of time. And uh, I know, I know you got to bump out of here. So we want to, yeah. we want to get you out of here on time. Thanks, buddy. We certainly appreciate everybody jumping on today, being a part of the conversation. We'll come back to you next Tuesday, about ten o'clock. For more information, check out all the social media sites. Everything that uh, uh, we have available, we love to have connect with pastors. Get more information to you about this very topic that we talked about today. Talk more in depth about that. So, look forward to seeing you next Tuesday around ten o'clock. Until then, go live mobilized.